Recorded in their mother's basement, Super Nerdland brings you Graded Point Five. Where at a comic book, it would be worth less than the poly bag it comes in. Hey, everybody, welcome to Graded Point Five. I'm your host, Jason. With me tonight is uh, Dick and Wayne. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of them nights. Like, guys, we've been burned out for a while. This is after taking two weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... We're ready for something new. How's the, how's the best way to put it? We don't hate Hellboy, but we wish he didn't exist anymore. <laughs> or at the very least, that we didn't have to cover it anymore. Which is fine, because after tonight, we don't have to anymore. Yeah. And luckily, we picked a good one to stop on. Um, in fact, tonight we're talking about the six-issue miniseries uh, fucking Darkness Calls. Story by Mike Mignola, art by Duncan Fergredo, so on and so forth. The usual Hellboy crew. If you like what we're saying, you know, go to our Twitter, uh, Grade Point Five, or leave us a comment let us know how wrong we are. Whatever. We probably won't read it anyway. <laughs> Brutal honesty. Alright. I don't remember this comic well enough to go through the story. <laughs> so, um, basically what ends up happening is Hellboy um, is marked for death. Uh, well, not so much death as uh, having his eye cut out because the Baba Yaga had her eye cut out in Russia uh, by Hellboy. And so she's trying to get an eye for an eye. And so she's uh, summoned the the armies of the undead to chase down Hellboy, and um, what a dick. Um, so uh, in the first uh, the first uh, chapter, I'm, I can't do a detailed analysis of the plot. He ends up getting chased by um, a bunch of undead uh, uh, who are chasing him for the puppet Yaga. Um, yeah. But, like, the big thing, the plot doesn't matter. The big thing is this is, like, the culmination of all the little threads going through all the other parts that we've read. Yeah, it's, it's a tying up of all of the other subplots that have gone on and the, the other issues that we read uh, in t- some of the miniseries as well. Yeah, like, the Baba Yaga stuff comes, you know, completely full circle. Uh... Pretty much everything but the frogs. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I didn't. I didn't understand the frogs. That was interesting. Well, the frogs get explained later. Yeah. But yeah, we get some artwork that is not by uh, Mike Mignola for once, which actually works because uh, Duncan Fergredo's work is a lot fuller and a lot more detail. Doesn't yeah. rely on negative space. Yeah, it allows for some really beautiful panels to happen, and it's a very it's a very refreshing change from Mike's art. Not that I don't like Mike's art, but uh, it really brings the story to life and draws you in. Every panel is just beautiful uh, in every single issue. I, I I find myself looking at stuff, and I'm like, huh, I wonder if there's a scan of that that I can get for like wallpaper, yeah. uh, the the bubbles on it or anything, because the art is just beautiful in all cases. Just the level of uh, detail and everything that's uh, done here is great. There's a lot going on, but not so much that you get overwhelmed. Um, But there's plenty of detail, and uh, a lot of attention and care is given to Hellboy himself. He uh, looks really good in this comic. Uh, Also, the fact that he's uh, running away from the Baba Yaga, she is uh, designed very nicely and, you know, very intimidating looking, and along with all of the various armies and... Uh, groups of undead that uh, attempt to attack Hellboy. Um, it, it's just interesting to see something this detailed because it's like uh, not so much what do I, what do I want to get at. It's not so much the the simple to- storytelling that goes on with Mike's comics where there's a very you know simple sort of a thing. It's a six it's a six issue miniseries, so it 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 takes a lot of uh, room. And that's the thing. There's a lot going on here, and so having its own art style really pulls it together to make it like this is important, you know. And it really is. It's a it's a it's a very big climax here within the first ten issues. 
Yeah, I mean, we're getting, we're finally seeing stuff like uh, the Hecate slash Ilsa Hopstein coming back and being imprisoned and, you know, fucking a church full of, uh, I don't even know what you call them. They're not monsters, they're just... Fairy tale monsters? Kind of, yeah. That's a good way to put it. I mean, that's that's the closest I can think of. We get giants, and we get fucking zombie hordes, or skeleton hordes, I should say. I just want to say this: this whole wrap up of everything is very much inspired by like '80s power metal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's very much a a metal opera of a comic book. It's it's very interesting to see that. But like he's, we have the giant wolves and you know various gods and things that have been you know the subject of of metal uh, even up to recently. You know a lot of uh, popular figures and ideas and things. It's uh, very interesting to see. But it, it plays out like some sort of like almost a metal album if it was animated. Yep. And they're bringing a uh, fucking Koshe the Deathless. Yes, which uh, uh, is is interesting because um, initially he gets killed by uh, he he has a uh, I don't remember who's guiding him. Um, do you remember the character that was guiding him to where he needed to go? Little girl. Oh yeah, yeah. The, I don't remember her name. Yeah. Um, I can't remember it either. But um, she gives him a comb, and he kills uh, kills uh, Kosheshi the Deathless by throwing a comb at him that turns into a forest and impales him on a tree. So he's basically dead because he's stuck on the tree, and the tree grew through him, so he can't really get down. He's immobilized, so he's basically dead. And then the Baba Yaga found out that he's hiding his soul um, inside of an egg, inside of a No, she, and... she hid it there. Oh, she hid it there? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she stole his soul, and um, so she infuses him with uh, a lot of her remaining energy because she's really desperate to get back at Hellboy. Um, Hellboy and him have one hell of a fight. It's uh, pretty. It's pretty dope. Some of my favorite pieces of art are there because the fighting is just so detailed. It just looks so, you know, visceral. We get a lot of um, a lot of just crazy scenes going on here while he's fighting uh, all sorts of armies and of course I see the deathless and all all these these different entities are are trying to to uh, seek vengeance for the Baba Yaga it's just so 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 much is going on in every panel uh, even up to the end and then um Near the end of the story, um, the the Baba Yaga is uh, low on energy, um, and um, and so he manages to to stick Kochesi to the to Kochesi to the ground, and I think he dies. Um, and we get a, vin- a glimpse of future events where Hellboy has uh, a crown above his head and full horns. Well, it looks like a stone sword, and uh, there's a lot of people in black armor behind him. Another one of those visions of Hellboy becoming the Destroyer. Exactly. Um, it's a very uh, cool piece of art. I like it a lot. I, I think it's a very uh, cool, uh, ser- uh, cool rendition of him as the Destroyer. Uh, I, I just, I, I think it's. Uh, just goes to show that he's definitely, you know, demonic in some sense, and he has some sort of a fate that he's avoiding, you know? Yeah. But, alright. God damn, like... <laughs> how do I put this? We've been reading this stuff for fucking ever. Very true. To a point where we've been bored of it for quite some time. We've been postponing recording episodes. You know, we've we got to a point where we started to regret doing this whole season. 
But this actually felt pretty nice. It felt like there was actually a payoff. Like, all those stories kind of didn't exist in a vacuum anymore, you know? Oh, that's all you can hope for. Yeah. yeah. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back at this and it's like, you know, we, we could have done it in a more timely fashion or mm-hmm. spread it out, but I'm kind of glad we did it. Yes, definitely. It was it, it was a good look at a very good series of comics. Um, it's got some of my the my favorite art so far in a lot of uh, senses. It's a lot of uh, style jives for me. You know what I mean? I've always think, thought that the art has been on point for pretty much every single issue that we've read. Yeah. Uh, uh, including some of the guest pieces that have, uh, were in miniseries and things like that, and uh, the various collection uh, pieces as well. I think that uh, all of the artists that have taken on Hellboy uh, as an idea have always done him justice. Yeah, it has been a lot of artists, hasn't it? Yeah, Christ. it's... <laughs> It's, it's, it's interesting to see who he chooses to draw his stories so that way, you know, he can tell them. And it depends on how, how he feels they need emphasis in one way or another, you know? Yeah. I, I was going to say that one of the things for future, you know, things, like, I don't mind doing, you know, a series, but I think it should be, like broken up if you if you know what i mean like we oh, do it yeah. like a a trade you know at one trade and then another tra- you know what i mean it's like one trade and then wait a little while and do another trade of that series because i think when you do much of one thing at one time you get burnt out on it pretty quick yeah and you know doing an entire run just about like it, how to, how's the best way to liken this okay Here's probably the best way I could put it. You know, I think all of us, you know, all of us here, we we also like video games, right? You know, we're you know we play them, we you know enjoy them. I, I'm correct in saying that, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever worked at a at a uh, retailer, like a video game retailer, you will start to hate video games because you're around them all the time. You know, and it's kind of like a similar thing. I would think almost like working in a comic book shop. You know, it's like, oh God, I hate, I like, oh, I work in comic, but I hate them because I see them every freaking day. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that would ever happen to us in that regard, but what I'm saying is like the format of sticking with one series until, you know, for I don't know how many weeks it's going to end up being, what, 10 weeks? Worth. Quote unquote weeks. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, might be a bit much, you know? <laughs> Like yeah. I don't mind. Like I don't mind. Like when you know, I don't mind doing like when we did a trade, like when we did Kingdom Come or you know, Infinity War or something like that. You know what I mean? That doesn't that bother me, you know, or anything. But yeah. Sticking with something like that long, it's like oh, you know, oh it's Hell, oh it's Hellboy again. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> it'd be the same thing if it was like Batman run. It was like oh Batman again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, although I think Batman would uh, get older a lot faster. Well, it depends on the stories. True, yeah, true. It depends agree. on where you pick it up. Yeah, that's true. Well, there was a big positive during all this. While we were focusing on Hellboy, we got to strengthen our reserves of what we have available to us. We were able to take the time to get a hold of new stuff we can read uh start branching out to like youtube and you know, we we took the time to really work on you know the back end yep but at the kind of the cost of the quality of the show well it's all about you know two things two ways to look at that we're trying to put something out which is commendable yeah uh, um but at the same time <clears throat> you, you know um at the same time you were like you said you were making things better on the you know the back end you were improving whatnot and like i said uh you know you asked me yesterday what i thought about the whole you know putting 
starting to put episodes on YouTube, and I've said absolutely. Yeah. Because I felt for a long time not taking anything away from our hosts, you know, or anything like that. But it's, I think it's an, it's ideal to put as many ears on your stuff as possible, and that means using as many platforms as you can, you know? Yeah. And I agree. We need to utilize whatever is available to us. Right. Especially if we don't have to put any money out of our own pockets. Right. I mean, it's not like we're trying, like we're not looking as like, oh, we're going to make a bunch of money on YouTube. No, we're not that. We're not that silly. Oh, we know dude, that's um, not a. I'm not, none of them are going to be monetized. I'm going to imagine. So I mean, I think there's an option you could set on your fucking account to not monetize anything. Yeah. So you, it's just going to be an experience, pretty much. Yeah. Be careful. It's just going to be, here's our content. Right. And all of it. Not just the podcast. Not just the second show whenever we get unlazy and do it. <laughs> it's going to be like Daryl's and my uh, gameplay Your series. Playthroughs and, yeah, yeah, yeah game, game stuff. You know, it, when, you know, like our... I even say, like, sometimes we, we need to still sometimes record our random bullshit sections with that just kind of go on different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, that's a... Here's an interesting thing we're talking about, you know? <laughs> and a, with utilizing YouTube, there's nothing to say we can't start, if we ever get a fan base under us, doing streaming. Exactly. Just need the need somebody with a good uh, upload to do that. <laughs> no, uh, if you do it through Google Hangouts, it doesn't use any upload. That's true. That's true. But then again, I also have problems connecting Google Hangouts all of a sudden, so we'll see how that goes. That and I can stream audio pretty easily. I blame the uh, Democrats for my lack of being able to connect to Google Hangouts. Uh, I'm not sure I follow you. It's the it's their fault. I'm just blaming them. I got you know you, you know blame you got to blame something on somebody. So you know. Well, I mean, you got a point. <laughs> but no, it's like, oh, did I tell you what uh, I did to the site the other day? Hmm. Every episode now, if you go to look at the episodes on the website, it'll tell you who's on the episode. Oh, that's really cool. It'll have under the like the episode block, it'll say speakers, Jason, yada 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 yada, yada whoever. That's kind of cool. That way, you know, people say, "Oh, that's the that's that one." And I I may have missed one or two for you because like your habit of showing up halfway through the show. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing is, if you go to the About Us page and click our names, it'll show you all the episodes we're in. That's cool, too. Functionality. Yeah. And now I'm going through the process of taking all of our back episodes and turning them into videos and putting them on YouTube. That's a good idea, too. Just a, that, that kind of builds up a uh, backlog. And uh-huh. on the Twitter, it allows me to reshill all the old episodes and new location. It almost sounds like uh, the work of a madman. <laughs> An absolute fucking madman. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Dude, the whole idea came to me while I was high today. That's not surprising. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, let's be honest. You can hear it every time I spark my lighter, can't you? Yeah, I, I heard that. I heard your dog growling a minute ago. Um... Neighbor's dog was outside. Oh yeah. Well, you got to deal with neighbor's dog, man. They can't. They they know better. That's not his property. That's your dog's property. Your prop. Your dog owns that property. <laughs> I mean, man, you're also dying, so that's one thing. Uh, While I was at Leo's, like up until like 20 minutes before we started recording, mm-hmm. I was out on his back porch smoking a lot of cigarettes. Ah. Got a lot of good... and drinking a lot of rum. You got a lot of good old fashioned tar in your lungs right now. Uh huh. And a bit of rum. And a bit of rum in your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody made me laugh. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna inhale this rum because. <laughs> <sighs> no, honestly, I, we were drinking uh, coconut rum. Like first we were having it mixed in drinks, and then we were just taking it straight to the head. 
Not, not even taking shots. It's like Leo passes me the bottle. I take a big ass swig and hand it back. I swear to holy God. You know those? I've told you about those. Uh, those friends I've reconnected with after like you know what, about six seven years. Right. You know, they watch wrestling. They are literally you guys. <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding because what do they do? They they drink rum while I'm, while we're watching pay per view. They they smoke weed. You know I'm like damn. <laughs> it's like this is like this is like live action Jason and the guys. <laughs> so what you're saying is when I come up to meet up with the dick and you guys, I need to meet these people. Oh yeah, I think you would get along with them <laughs> swimmingly. <laughs> <laughs> My people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like ah. Oh. As soon as you walk into the room, you're like, you'll be, you would do this. You'd be like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> especially, you would love it too, because especially like he's got like shelves of comics of like trades oh. and things like that and memorabilia and stuff. So it'd be like, wow, this is like, this is the life I want to live. And, right. it, it, and it would still be not working and uh, collecting comics. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't work either, so it's kind of funny. Uh, but <laughs> anyway. All right, looking back at this whole Hellboy shit, mm -hmm. what would be the one takeaway for each of you? He likes to fall through things. <laughs> Fair. I mean, he is literally ECW. I mean, it's like, yeah. put him through a table. That's, that's... <laughs> you know. Replace table with floor. Yeah, yeah. Or, Replace or table window. Or, or, or Usually or, a floor. Uh, some, kind of, surface. some kind of long fall. He was basically New Jack. You know, the worst part is I wasn't going to start coughing until you made me laugh. <laughs> it's, it was, it's essentially Hellboy, like, I'm in, I'm in, um, I'm in a um, t tall structure of some kind, and I'm going to go through something. There, there's no two ways about this. I think my biggest takeaway from Hellboy is that comics don't have to be about superheroes saving the world or anything like that. And that, that they can be about very surreal, sort of beautiful, interesting, strange mythos without having to be uh, really anything following the rules of what makes, you know, some superhero comics so good. Because there's definitely rules to the way that Marvel and DC uh, structure their things things like that you know uh with their characters whereas with hellboy you it just feels like it just the world around hellboy affects hellboy it's not hellboy is starring in a story where it could feel like that with uh, certain other uh comics you know what i mean like with like, well, also uh, while well, also saving the world because he yeah. does do that you know. <laughs> but yeah but it but it's incidental it's it's not it's not like uh, sometimes it's on purpose, but most times it's incidental to the fact that he's, you know, wandering after he quits the uh, BPRD. It's kicked out of the Adventurers Club, I think. Yeah, I get it, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, it's um, one of them situations like, oh, I, I... It'd be like if you're going down the street and you go to, like, you know, somebody's, like, has their, you know, <laughs> oh, they blew out a tire. I'm going to go help them change their tire, and you find out they're Satan. It's like, oh... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's basically the best way to describe it. Yeah. it. It just goes to show you that you can tell stories that are a lot uh, more, you know, on the weird end of the spectrum without it having to be uh, your 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 typical hero comic. And I think that's one of the things that really draws me to trades of like Marvel or DC is that it it takes these heroes and puts them in situations that aren't your average sort of day to day issue kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and just all of Hellboy as a run feels like a bunch of a series of trades, and, and it's very, very uh, good. Um, it, it it doesn't really get old. The the universe is always interesting. It's always cool to see where inspiration is drawn from. Mm -hmm. Cause there's there's always interesting mythos behind everything that Hellboy interacts with, and everything is based on some sort of a story or a fable or some sort of. Uh, an idea in a, in a culture around the world. Now, see, for me, I think the biggest takeaway was uh, it doesn't matter if your content feels like something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's how it's the spin you put on it. I think I kind of get what you're talking all about. All Mignola stuff. It feels like it, like Lovecraft with a superhero. Yeah. But it's the fact that he put that 
almost strange Lovecraftian superhero in a way that gives that made the whole thing unique. Mm -hmm. Even though at its core, it's stuff we've all seen before. Yeah. I kind of like the fact that, okay, you know, it's like if we're going to, you know, I guess the best example I can use for a superhero would be Superman, right? Archetype. And, you know, it's always like, oh, Superman, he's good. And, you know, he's never been a bad guy, blah, blah, blah. Well, in this situation, you got a good guy who is keeps being prophesied that he's going to be the bad guy. And but he keeps, you know, and of course, he knows this thing. And he's, he's rejecting it, which I think is kind of cool. You know, usually it's like a... You know how they say you can't avoid fate and all this stuff? And he's like, yeah, fuck fate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I ain't, ain't going to be the bad guy. You know, he's literally y'all. fighting the universe. The universe is... And that's why he ends up in all these situations, is because the universe is trying to... Force him to... Prophecy, yeah. Yeah, force him to, into it's, his... Uh, it's a destiny. play... It's a play on the classic... Uh, conflict man versus god now it's literally man versus several gods yeah lots and lots of gods all conspiring against him and he's still coming out on top somehow (laughs) i wouldn't quite say on top because i do know where this all leads well yeah i mean i know but still treading water let's put it that way managing to keep one step ahead of inevitability yeah. It's it's very it's just it's very bizarre the the story that's being told in terms of doing it in the format of a comic book because most comics most comics uh, that you see the sort of figure that Hellboy is it's usually a superhero kind of a thing you know it's a it's a dark power sort of an arc or something you know you know what I mean yeah <clears throat> well. Let's stop looking backwards for a bit. Let's start looking forward. We got some big shit coming up. Yep, I just took one. Wait, what? What are you talking about now? (laughs) Okay. Well, first off, Evan has left the show for a leave of absence. Let's put it that way. It's nothing negative. He just got a new job, and it's... He's being a work boy. Yeah, it's taking up all of his time and energy, and I completely understand. Yep. And playing Burnout Paradise, apparently. The is inferior he, Burnout. But, is uh, he playing a video game right now? I don't know about right now, but he said earlier uh, 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 Burnout Paradise is the be- one of the best racing games of all time, which our good our good co-host informed him he is wrong. And- <laughs> <laughs> He's the best Burnout. Yeah. Duh. It, yeah, I like I like how you were, you were like, yeah, Paradise is the best burnout. What are you talking about? <laughs> Get out of here. No, Revenge is the best burnout. The the takedowns, the courses, everything about Revenge is so much better than Paradise. Paradise is fun, don't get me wrong, and it's fun that it has an open world, but it's completely different. Not as good as Revenge, where Revenge feels handcrafted, plus the soundtrack's way better in Revenge than Paradise. See? That was kind of what I was saying. It's like he's either uh, working or playing uh, Burnout Paradise. That's going to be the joke from now on. That's uh, okay. Whenever Evan does come back, we're going to be like, "So you finally got done playing Burnout Paradise?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, his spot will be immediately filled. Yep, we're we're bringing in titties. What? Her name is Piper. <laughs> oh, Piper! Right. Sorry. I mean, you said that uh, you know she was okay being harassed. I didn't know. <laughs> At least wait till it's her, to her face. I'll say I'll tweet it to her right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, absolute fucking madman. Go it. <laughs> <laughs> She's got one of those weird. Uh... It's like fizz giggity or something like that. Yeah. Why are we doing this? <laughs> because I am a madman. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a point to prove? Yes. Found it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Piper will be popping in literally um, if everything goes as planned next week. Nice. Because um, ho- I'm hoping we can record next week. That's the plan. That's the idea. And we will be going back to the comic of the week style. Mm-hmm. And now, boys, is where I get to get your dicks hard. Whoa, that sounds pretty gay, bro. I'm gonna oh, believe right there. me, it's gonna get gay. Oh, oh God. God. 
gay in all the best ways. Ice man. <clears throat> um, no, he said no. best. He literally said best, not not, uh, not ham fisted. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, because we'll actually have people paying attention. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we've got some good shit lined up. Like uh, our first episode back from this fucking debacle that this Hellboy run has been is going to be Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. The movie did just come out recently. So well, no the loose to. adaptation of... Who said yeah. adaptation of one or two that... pages of the the prequel comic? Yeah, like I basically. said, loose ab- adaptation of Thanos Quest is what they probably should have called it instead of the Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> and, and literally one panel from Infinity Gauntlet. Right. <laughs> because as I said, uh, that uh, I mean the movie's good. I'm not saying you know don't don't take away from what I'm you know about to say. The movie I like the movie, really good. But it, it wasn't a war. It was more of a battle you know yeah. <laughs> you know and a battle is not a war you know so it's like uh okay i guess i mean it, it for for a movie you know that's called war it seemed very uh it condensed yeah i guess that's the best word for it but anyway but, that's uh, for infinity war 2 well <laughs> after we do gauntlet <laughs> uh i'm letting piper i let piper pitch an episode okay she picked this dark horse comic called Alabaster Wolves. Seems I've heard of the before. Yeah, I'm poking at it right now. I want to say I might, I probably saw it during the Hellboy stuff where it had like advertisements for it. I might have seen. No, because we didn't read any Hellboy this recent. This comic came out in 2012. I didn't say it was yeah. like this Hellboy. <laughs> I mean, maybe I did, but I didn't mean this Hellboy. I meant like yeah. some Hellboys I've picked up at the stores. Ah, oh! You <laughs> pick some Hellboy up at Ollie's? No, 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 no. This was like I'll go to Books a Million and read all their books and not pay for them. Ah, <laughs> but I do pick up books at Ollie's. They had some Hellboys there that that's I like. Yeah, low tech, that's like low tech piracy. <laughs> they don't but stop no, me. I, hey, uh, I, hey, hey! I buy a fucking five dollar coffee. They can let me read their fucking books. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. For real. But uh, after that, dude, uh, I'm thinking we're going to be uh, hitting up some Warlock. Oh, yeah. Might as well get him, out, get, him, get him properly introduced for when he's finally introduced into the MC. Yes. Well, I've got some very specific issues of Warlock that I want to read. Yes. That is the uh, classic Jim Starlin run. The guy who created them, that would be, uh... Well... Well, I should say create, define... Uh, you might as well say create, he defined what he is. Defined so. him, yeah. I forget yeah. who actually created him. It was probably fucking Jack Kirby or Stanley. You know, it's one of them. No, it wasn't, <laughs> that, wasn't that far back. Um... It was Jack Kirby and Stanley. <laughs> Holy a- shit. <laughs> actually? <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna there's a Adam Warlock. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm Let's right see. Adam Warlock. Let me, uh, Fantastic Four number sixty-seven <clears throat> would be his first appearance outside the cocoon. Um, the Adam Warlock they created by. And Lee and Jack Kirk. <laughs> God damn, yeah. yeah. But uh, the Stalin run defined him. Right. Well, it says here, created him. When he was him, it was Stanley yeah. and Jack Kirby. Adam Warlock was Roy Thomas and Gil Kane. And like you said, uh, Jim Starling's run defined what he was. But that's the, uh, the first run with the Magus and the Universal Church of Truth. And that is some of the best fucking comics writing I have ever read. It's a shame that uh, Marvel has missed away any goodwill they had with Jim Starling. Well, no, Starling's uh, back. He's back with the MCU, I know that much. Um, no. He's finishing the uh, the graphic novel trilogy. Oh, well, that's good. I know for a while he was like, they, you know, they were on like 
bad terms. Yeah, they were on some horrible terms for a while. Yeah, because uh, he, he he actually went out to say that like he respected the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Studios better than he did the uh, actual Marvel Comics wing of uh, everything. I was like, wow, that's uh... <laughs> brutal. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we've got some other stuff like poking around some Thanos. Uh, eventually, want to do an episode on Transformers. <laughs> episode, <laughs> episode on Judge Dread. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've really opened up what we have available to us. Like, just, like, the past month, like I said, the episodes haven't been so great, but everything behind the scenes has been just getting better and better. And then we're putting in a lot of work. It's just, god damn if we don't have to get up off our asses and actually record the episodes. Yeah, dick. Hey. I'm just trying to blame somebody. That's a not necessarily. It might not be your fault, but you know, I just put a name to it. That's rude. Fine, I feel I'll, insulted. I'll, I'll blame somebody else. Damn, Roman Reigns. Yeah, that. There we go. That's okay. obviously the source of all of our problems. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. If we, uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for Roman Reigns, everything would be better. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like you're not wrong. Uh, you know, if we didn't have to deal with the uh, the, the, press, the the pressing nature of what Roman Reigns is, um, the universe would be in balance. See, Thanos, you only had to delete one. One person. <laughs> I feel so terrible now. <laughs> Vince, I don't feel so good. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, we are so off the goddamn rails right now. Well, you literally ran through that last uh, bit of Hellboy in five minutes. I'm just FYI on that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like filling in and what's coming up. And but the thing is, with honestly, with the pacing of that comic, we really gave it. it I feel enough. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. not saying it wasn't yeah. enough. I'm just saying that, you know, y'all ran through it that quick, and now now it's uh. <laughs> All right, guys, strap in. <laughs> well, no, we only got twenty minutes left. Holy shit! <laughs> well, you could just like roll it early. I mean, that's up to you. Yeah, though, it's your show. Yeah, um, we could just call it early. Well, no, it's like let's put a fucking end cap on this. Before, okay. before we say our our goodbyes and I start shilling shit for like all 12 people who stuck with this shit thank you at least it's in double digits yeah give it that yeah, yeah thanks for listening we appreciate it yeah, done, uh... and we're hoping this new shit starts bringing people back hmm We'll have a, and plus we'll like do better job of like letting people know that it's available and not just uh, <laughs> you know, it's like oh, oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's a certain amount of I really need to take the social media aspect seriously. Yeah, Dick. I don't have access to that account. I mean, yeah, Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't have access. No, I think this is Mark Wade's fault this time. Yeah, yeah Mark Wade, you way, fucking... Yeah, fuck you, Mark Wade. Yeah, fuck you and your industry-destroying shit. <laughs> Jesus, Get the bunch bunch fuck of, out of here. Bunch of gay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That popped out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mark Wade, I think you're a homosexual. <laughs> but, but yeah, Mark Wade, uh, we fucking openly invite you to debate us on stream. Please. Hold on, but <laughs> not about just any subject. The subject will be whether or not 
Captain America's death at the end of Civil War was worth it. <laughs> there you go. Millar write, write that? Yeah, no, I just want to talk to Mark Wade about it. Oh, okay. I think I can own him. I think you could too, because, <laughs> yeah. because it totally wasn't worth it in the long it run. It was not. <laughs> But in the long run, it was mood anyway. He fucking came back. Yeah, in less than a year's time. It's like somebody, I think somebody did a uh, thing and they talked about how, and I didn't realize this had happened because I guess it was so bang, bang. I didn't realize it happened so quickly together that Batman and Captain America were killed in the same year. Yep. Whoa. And they came back in the same year. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, the, that's like that's like killing the, the, the money tree. That's like going to the backyard and cutting down the money tree. Like, you have a tree well, that grows the funny money. Thing. Both Batman and Captain America were replaced by their first protege. Yep. With Dick Grayson becoming Batman and Bucky Barnes becoming Captain America. Yep. A lot of parallels were going on at that point. Yeah, and and then what was funny at the end of it, how they came back was timey wimey bullshit. <laughs> Both of yeah. them. <laughs> they they were ne- Both of them were never dead, but st- unstuck in time. Yep. It but, was the biggest fucking load of bullshit. Which was it was I mean kind of with Cap it was like at least he was reliving his own life and he could kind of he was kind of giving clues to how he could come back but with Batman it was just like I'm just doing I'm just going through time I don't even fucking know here's Caveman <laughs> and Vandal Savage Caveman Vandal Savage fucking he run into pirates. Uh, pirates and then um what's his name um ah cowboy um. Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex, yeah. I mean, it's like, it was well, just I mean, all... Jonah Hex kind of, he goes through time anyway. Yeah, Jonah Hex, I mean, it's like, yeah. I mean, it's like a... He wound up in the future for a while at one point. That's true. That's true. But, you know, still, it was like, it, it, it's funny how, when if you, that should be an inter- that would be a show right there. It paralleled their, their deaths and how it all, like, paralleled together. <laughs> you know, it was just funny how it all ended up, like, being... And, oh, Jason, I didn't think about this. You know, the remember the battle for the cowl? Yep, there battle was kind the of battle for the shield. Yeah, because they were everybody was like, "Who should be the new Captain America?" You know, remember for like Clint Barton was going to be Captain America for Deadpool wanted him. <laughs> Deadpool, yeah, like there was a. That, you know, I remember uh, uh, quite a bit, and then finally Bucky's like, "Well, you find out." Well, it wasn't didn't Cap say if anybody's going to take my place, it'll be Bucky. Yeah, yeah. So Cap had made up his mind long for even died. Yeah. But see, this is why we're leaving the Hellboy shit behind. Yeah, so we could talk about all kinds of bullshit. <laughs> like, we do better when we're talking about shit we know. Yeah. We don't know this Hellboy shit too much. Like, what? and what we do know probably just came from the movies. Right. I will admit, I watched the movies before I read the comic. That's what I'm saying. Oh, boy. Yeah. It wasn't, I mean, honestly, you know, being totally honest, those movies weren't bad. They were, you know, I mean, Golden Army wasn't as good as the first one, but it wasn't, like, terrible neither. Yeah. It, it was just a long fucking uh, time between the two movies. And that was, like, what kind of was the drawback on it. I mean, yeah, that was my thing going into it, too, is... And, like... I went. I didn't even go from watching the movies to reading Hellboy. I went from watching movies to reading BPRD. Because mm-hmm. I never gave too much of a crap about Hellboy himself. I was always like a bigger Abe fan. Right. And I will say, reading some Abe stuff is not off the table eventually. Right. <laughs> I mean, we got, we have so much shit we could do. I, it, it'd be ridiculous to sit here and list everything. Yep. Lots of things we want to cover. And the list grows every time, you know, we step into the comic shop. Pretty much. So, yeah. Um... I'm I'm feeling optimistic about shit going forward. That's a good idea. I do. 
Now, having said all this, if you agree, disagree, don't care, whatever, go to our Twitter, twitter.com slash graded.5, just spell it out. Go to our YouTube, just look up graded.5. Go to our Patreon, go to our website, go fuck yourself. (laughs) So, yeah. We'll see y'all with some better shit next time. Hey, this is Jason. This is here to say, if you enjoyed the show, spread it around on social media. And follow our social media presences on Facebook and Twitter, both at Graded.5. Just spell the whole thing out. Also, support your local comic shop and the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. If you don't know where your local comic shop is, there are sites like uh, findacomicshop.com and that'll help you find it. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show and we'll catch you next time.